afternoon. Um, we're going to be looking at wonderful OneNote, a class notebook uh, specifically, and this is what the sort of things we're going to cover this afternoon. What is OneNote? If you don't know what OneNote is, it totally changed my life when I first discovered it. And it's actually the first thing that I learned how to use. So there you go, bit of useless information there. Collaboration with OneNote, sharing the OneNote, examples of how it can be used. We're going to talk to you about a little bit about the MEC, the Microsoft Educator, Eater, Educator Center. My teeth are not working. But first we have some introductions and we have Magnificent Sarah. So yeah, my name is Sarah Clark. I'm one of the presenters today. Um, I'm a biology and science teacher over at Queen Anne High School over in Dunfermline and Fife, although I don't um I don't live over that side of the water. I'll stay this the other side of the fourth, or as I say, the best side of the fourth. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm an MIE expert. I have been for the last couple of years. I did notice there's a couple of MIE experts in um, the meeting today. And I'm also one of the MIE fellows here um, up in Scotland, along with Ros Lee, um, supporting the community as best we can. Um, I have got two kids of my own, both of them now up at high school. And I've got a third baby who, I apologise now, you may hear him at some point throughout the session um but yeah so that that's me i'm one of the one of the presenters today still in the classroom um four days a week so i know exactly what it's like for you guys um and as amanda said one note really for me when i found it was kind of that and teams were the two things that i was looking for um digitally in my classroom and it was such a game changer um, all my classes now are, are using OneNote. Um, I use it as my own personal planner and we'll talk a little bit more about how I use it, but it really um, made a huge difference to learning and teaching within, within my classroom. Fabulous. And me, I am Amanda Pickard. I'm the other presenter today. I'm a primary school teacher and I I am actually have been teaching infants for the last few years, so I've been teaching primary one during the two lockdowns. That was interesting. Um, but I'm actually on secondment at the moment as a digital development officer for my local authority. So I've been out since March, just after we went back into the school building and um, out until June at the moment. So um, I'm an MIE expert. This is my third year and I am a powerlifting, crocheting, book reading human who belongs to a menagerie of animals, fluffy and feathered. And I apologise now for any noise. I did say about five minutes ago that my budgie was quiet, but I can actually see she's starting to tweet and nod her head and Travis might be in to interrupt things as well. So I apologise now for that. Well, um, all this noise when you're presenting Amanda because that's where she starts. I know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> she's nodding about and starting to tweet so sorry about that um and we're going to get started with a little menti so um i do have the qr code in there and um, sarah i put the link to it in um the our one note our collaborative our, one, our collaborative one note as we were planning today we planned in one note which is super handy and so i think sarah's going to put the link in to our one note and then i will skip over we've actually got two slides we've got a multiple choice question to get your brains working and then we've got just um your thoughts and opinions really is the second slide so i will skip across to here um so one note class notebook can help teachers stay organized captured ideas access from any device embed multimedia content give verbal feedback or all of the above what is the answer let's see what you think Got two for all of the above. Anybody else? It's a nice, easy question to get started. Six for all of the above. Oh, you're all too good. Oh, eight. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice easy one. Can I ask on a on a scale of, of one to five, I think I asked this last time, actually on a scale of one to five, where would you place yourself in terms of your confidence using OneNote? Like one being never really used it before, have heard of it but not done anything with it. And five being, you know, I have used it and I'm here to get a little bit extra. If you could just stick that in the chat, that would be quite helpful to see um, and kind of gauge where, where people are with it. 
because obviously with our sessions, we're trying to to make sure we kind of cater for everybody. So we try and give a, an overview of how to use it as well. So for people that are very familiar with it, there might be a section in it that, that you're doing I'm, I'm, I know how to use it. Um, but looking for that little bit extra maybe of how, but most people are kind of familiar with it or have heard of it and have done a little bit with it, but are probably looking a, a bit more. Yeah, so a mixture of kind of twos and threes, that kind of thing. One, one's it. We've got a couple of fives. <laughs> Brilliant. Should we go to the second? Uh, oh, why will it not let me? It will not let me move on to the next slide. Oh, I'm doing well today. Let me just come out here. And it will not. <laughs> I think, have I Press frozen? escape, it'll come out of the present mode. Yeah, press escape already. Oh, here we go. Okay. And here, let's have this one. And it's the same uh, code, but I'm just going to present it now, hopefully. What would you like to use OneNote to do? What would you, what are you looking for it to do? What are your needs? I started using OneNote um, to do writing with uh, my primary three class, actually. And then I started using it for getting organised and then it changed my life forever. Here we go, staff notes, yep. topic research with pupil, accessibility, yeah, accessibility is phenomenal in OneNote, collaborate, no ideas on the go, emotional check-in, oh, that's an interesting one, I like that, homework, yep, be my textbook, save documents, yeah, I do a lot of that. Feedback, yeah. Brilliant. No ideas on the go, yeah, I use that all the time. Support children, yeah, definitely. Organise classwork. Yeah, independent students, yep. Brilliant. Look at okay, let's see if I can escape out of that this time and go back to the PowerPoint. Fantastic. Right, so what is OneNote? OneNote is um, like a big digital jotter or a binder. Um, I always think of um, Teams as kind of your classroom where you're talking to everybody and everybody owns everything. And then OneNote is like your um, your books and your folders and your jotters and things like that. That's how I kind of separate the two in my head. Um, I, I got rid of my big teacher planner file that I used to always drop. It was a big lever arch file that never quite closed after the first drop. And um, so I replaced that big folder with OneNote. It's um, the place where you can share everything. You can save all your classroom resources. You can share it, save all your teacher resources and you can keep them organized. Um, and there's a content library where you can organize your resources specifically that you're using with your students and every in pupil has their individual student space, which is so useful. So um, there's different versions. There's lots of different versions, actually. Today, I'm using my MacBook and I'm using the Windows 10 desktop app on my MacBook. I also have it on my iPad and my iPhone. I have on my school laptop, which is a Windows device. You can use it online. You can use it in Android. Um, there are slight differences in each of these apps and, or applications um, and I think Sarah did you say that you were going to speak a little bit about those differences? Yeah I think the next slide there there's 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 not a lot of differences if you flick I tried to take a couple of screenshots of them um, and it's kind of like finding what one is working for you and depending on what device you're on because as Amanda says you do have um, the MacBook and everything. Also thinking about what you want your students to be using it on or what they will be using it on. For, for us in school, if they are on a school device, they are using the online version. That's the version that if you're working with Teams, 
it will have an online version, which is um, this version uh, up here, which looks very, very similar to, yeah, so, sorry, I'm moving my, uh, my mouse there, forgetting that you're the one presenting, which yep. is the one kind of top left, which looks very similar to the one underneath it, which is actually the Windows 10 version, which is the one that I use most often now. My students use the online version because they are on multiple devices. Um, because I have my own device, I use the Windows 10 one. Um, I would recommend that if you are managing it as a teacher, that you use either the Windows 10 one or the one just to the right of that, bottom right, which is the desktop version. Um, they had mentioned a few, about a year and a half ago, that they were getting rid of uh, OneNote 2016 desktop version. They're not. They've decided that they're going to keep it. I think pressure from all these teachers saying, no, don't take our desktop version away. Um, but that will depend on what, again, what device you're using it on. My my um, local authority is only using Windows 10. We don't have access to the desktop anymore um, just because of for, to save space on our computers. I know quite a lot of teachers that use the desktop version. They find that one is gives them the most options but the Windows 10 and the online are almost at the point where they have almost everything the same as it. So Amanda's going to be, she's on a MacBook today, so she's going to be looking at it with a Mac um, one, but a lot of the stuff is going to be exactly the same anyway. We're not trying to show you anything that, that you can't do on all of them. Um, and the top right one is from an iPad. And... If you're using iPads and skills, I know some local authorities are going down the one-to-one -one route with the iPads. Um, you can manage that. Obviously, you're then on exactly the same version as what the students have got in front of you, which does make it much, much easier. Um, you are a little bit more limited with the iPad version to some of the things that you can and can't do. You still have the class notebook, so you can still distribute stuff, but you're slightly limited in that. So I would still say, as the teacher, um, I would probably still be using an app on a computer as well as um, on the iPad with it, just to give me all the features that I, I want to have on it, particularly things like inserting printouts and that. You can do it on the iPad, but it's a little bit fiddlier um, to do it. But hopefully we can show you on you know, the, the Mac one, some of the main ways that we are using OneNote and help you get started and develop your confidence in it, um, no matter what device you're using it on. I have it on my phone as well, um, and that's usually for quick wins, things that I'm just jotting down. Um, if I'm in the classroom and I'm trying to upload some student work, um, my phone is the easiest thing there just to take pictures and upload them or upload them later or pictures of the whiteboard that I've been writing on and things. So um, I do have it on my phone as well, although it does take up quite a bit of space because <laughs> I've got that many notebooks. Um, so different versions. Don't let it phase you um, and find one that you're familiar, that, that you want to work on. And I would say probably stick with that one. The only thing if you're using the app and one thing I want to point out is just make sure. Amanda, can you zoom in on that one bottom left a little bit? Yep. So just making sure that where it says, uh, no, other one, sorry. Oh, other bottom, one. other left. <laughs> Um, left as we look, um, where it's got that share button. Now up above that, um, it will should have your name and things like that on it. Just making sure that it is synced. Um, if it says offline, anything that you do on the OneNote will still stay on your device on the OneNote and it will then sync to the OneNote that's in the cloud um, as soon as you go onto Wi-Fi and you go back into your OneNote and it will upload it. It's great if your students are working offline, they can go online in the classroom and then they maybe go home and don't have the Wi-Fi. They can still work on things. They can still do their work in OneNote. And then when they come back into school the next day and they go back onto the Wi-Fi, it will sync up and then you can access their notes that are there. Just depending on infrastructure in your school, I know our, our Wi-Fi sometimes drops out um, and it comes up on the, that little bit of the corner and it says offline. Um, and I've said to staff, just be aware if you're putting in new content, it will need to sync for it to come through for the kids. Um, so just up above that share, this is this is just taken from the internet, up above that share, it'll have your name um, that's there for you to have a little look at. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, let's go back up. Let's come back out. 
Fantastic. Okie dokie. So I am going to start with showing you how to create a OneNote class notebook. So this is, um, you can get OneNotes. So there's a OneNote app and then a class notebook, which is actually attached to your team. So to create a, sta a class notebook, you need to create a team. So you probably have a team for your class. So I'm going to create a team and add a couple of pupils and then I'm going to show you how to set up a class notebook from there. So I'm going to skip across hopefully here and I'm going to go here. So up here in the top left hand corner, so as I said, I'm actually using the desktop apps this afternoon on my MacBook, but it looks very, very similar or in fact the same. Join or create a team. And then there's a little purple button, create a team. And I'm just, we're just going to look at class notebook. There are four class teams. There are four different types of teams. Today, we're going to look for class. So that's the one you would look for your students. And we are just going to do a wee TA one note class notebook. You can put in a description in your team. I'm just going to leave it blank. And I'm going to add a couple of students. I am going to add Sarah and Nicole. Oh, I can't add you. Um, if you put my full at glow.sch.uk, will it add me? Yes, there we go. And I'm going to add in. And I would I would recommend actually, particularly if you're new to class notebook, um, one note class notebook, I would recommend setting one up and adding in a couple of your teacher friends as students so that you can play about with things and you can share things out and distribute content to them. Um, I use, you'll see on my one later on, I have my own two children as my kind of guinea pigs. They get added to things all the time. Um, and I would really recommend setting up a little testing play team and you can see what the OneNote can really do. Yeah, I do that with Teams and OneNote. In fact, I use it. I just set up we test things all the time. You can't break anything. You can just go in and play. It's good to create a team as a teacher and also be added to a team as a member or a pupil so you can see it from both sides. So this is a team, it's completely empty. Um, there's a team tile, that's the name of my team. On the left hand side, we've got these tabs, channels, but because it's a brand new team, you're faced with this, which is uploading class materials or set up class notebook. And it is super duper easy to do, set up class notebook. set up a one note class notebook and I'm just going to use a blank notebook and um, you can do, use it from an existing notebook content so if you had set up your teacher planner last year and this is what I did then I used that same one note content to add it into my new class notebook um, but I'm going to start with a blank notebook today this is your template this is standard this just tells us exactly what um, is included you get a collaboration space where everyone can work together, edit, view. Uh, content library where a teacher can actually upload and edit content and your students can view it. Teacher only section, this is absolutely fantastic. This is where I keep all of my teacher planners, my frameworks, my weekly planners, my notes, my resources, absolutely everything. And it makes it easier for if I have a and teacher covering my class, I can add them to the team and they can get access to this. So I don't need to worry about handing a folder over. And then every single pupil in your class has their own space, their own private space. Click on next. Here you can actually change um, what is in your, each of the students' private spaces. So this is the standard. You can actually delete them or you can change them, the names, and you can add a section, whatever you want. And every single pupil in your team will have that their own space with those sections. So that will all be set up for you automatically. And this is where my Wi-Fi is going to go super slow. It's not usually this slow. Come on, Wi-Fi. Am I going to be brave and refresh it, Sarah? What do you think? It can sometimes. I did, did this uh, earlier on today when I was setting one up, and I actually made it from an existing um, because 
if you've already got one, I have one for my higher human set up. Um, and then when I made the new team, it was so easy to copy over the content library that has all my files, everything set out. In the new year, I just go, boom, content library is straight in. Um, we've got a question saying, if you set up a class notebook but deleted the content library, can you add that back in? Now, I think you can add a section called content library. Yes, um, you can copy the stuff back into it. Um, it's not quite as simple. Um, I remember there was issues with somebody was doing it before because it wasn't necessarily um, read only for the, the teacher, which we'll get onto that in a little minute. Um, but I'll see if I can find the answer during our session for you. Yeah, I think you have to set the permissions in SharePoint, maybe? Maybe not, I'm not sure. Um, so this is OneNote class notebook opened up inside my team, which is super handy. The three wee uh, books here at the side you can open up and you can see we've got our welcome section. We've got a section group here called the collaboration space. And every single page has some information about that page. And these are easy to edit and delete to welcome to our class. You can delete this whole section here just by selecting it. Um, there's the collaboration space, using the collaboration space, content library, teacher only section, and then my two pupils, which are Rose and Sarah. And you can see that those are the sections that I had asked to be included. And that is a very, very quick um, setup. I don't generally use um, OneNote class notebook within my Teams. I always either like to open it up here in the browser or open it up in the desktop app because it gives you a bigger space and you can see things a bit clearer. So that's my preference. But you can you can see quite a lot of the app open inside your team or open it up in your browser or in your desktop app, whatever it is best for you. Um, I am now going to hand over to Sarah, who is going to show you a little bit more about Teams. Are we ready? I do need to stop sharing. <laughs> no, we're not teams at all. That's nonsense. One note. No, one note. One note. So I have just asked the question um, on Twitter, um, and hopefully the community will come back. I've, I've tagged in Mr. Mr. Thulfson himself, the the main one note agenda uh, Avenger, um, with his cape, and asked him. So hopefully we should have an answer for you by the end of the session if you delete the content library. Um, as Amanda said, just for anybody that isn't familiar with it, in a one note when you make up a class notebook. You always have a collaboration space, a content library, a teacher section, and then any of the students that you have added. So I have my own two children in, in this one here. Um, they hate the fact that I put them in because they get pinged all the time and stuff. And they're like, oh, again. Um, remember I said about the syncing? Um, you can see up there in the corner, um, it says Mrs. Clark. So I can see that there's a little cloud with a tick there. So that is my status that is up to date. If I drop offline, it will tell me there that I am offline. Um, sometimes I have to manually sync my notebooks just because the, the internet's maybe dropped off and it's got a little X next to them. If you right click, so I've got all my notebooks you can see are here. And if I pick one of them and I right click, it then says sync. So this is a manual sync. And if you click on that, it'll say, do you want to sync this, this notebook or all of them? And if I just click all, um, what they'll do is they usually get a little kind of syncing icon. You can see there it's coming up. So it's syncing all of my notebooks. So anything that's new um, will be passing up to the cloud. Um, and if you're unsure, if you go, I, I need to double check that that's worked. If you open your um, OneNote just in the browser and, it, and it's there, then you know that that's it's synced because that's the online version all the time. So I've got a little um, test team that's made up. And we've got a one note here um, with the collaboration space. So this is the, the we call it the, the kind of we space, because this is a space where me and the students can all um, edit this section. So the collaboration space is one where, and it always tells you at the start when you get your one note when it's made up, you know, what the collaboration space is like. Um, so this is a section where you and the students can upload, type, put information in and everybody can see it. I use this a lot of the time for my um, experiments in science and um, gathering ideas, that kind of thing. 
they you then get the space that is the content library. And I know somebody said they deleted the content library. Even if it's blank, I would just leave it in there. And the content library is an area where students can see everything that's in the content library, but they can't edit the content library. So for me, this is where I put all the notes that I want students to see, um, maybe instructions, directions, pages that I want them to look at, but they can't go on and edit that. It's only me that can do that as a teacher or any other owner that's in my team. And that's usually any other teachers that I share the class with. with. There is then a teacher only space. And this is where I keep things that I don't want the kids to see. So I have maybe my marks record in here. Um, for that team, I have my SQA documents all in there, policy documents are in there. Um, I also have marking schemes in here. I will share marking schemes with my students at some point throughout the year, but I keep them in there and send them out to the students when I want them to have it. Um, I also have all my tasks sitting um, in there as well. So any tasks that I'm going to be asking my students to do, um, they all sit in this section um, ready for me to, to send out later on in the year. But it's only the owners of the team, the teachers that are in that OneNote that can see that section. Sarah, I think I've got the answer to the deleted uh, content library. Um, uh -huh. I, had a, I had a little look. I think you can go to your OneDrive, select the recycle bin, find the content library that's been deleted and restore it from there. There we go. Can oh. you type that in the chat? I have done. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Awesome. Um, there we go. Learn something new every day to skill day. The, so that's the, the teacher only section. And then what you've got is your students. Now, I'm the teacher here, so I've got all my students here. I've got you know Blair and I've got Morgan and they've got all the, the sections. Remember Amanda said that there's the, the ones that come up as default, class notes, handouts, homework and quizzes. I've actually added in two there. I've added one that says assessments and I've added one that says Teams tasks. And the only people that can see that notebook is Blair Clark and me and the other teachers that are that are in that notebook. Um, no other students can see that. They will only see their own notebook. And this is the bit I actually typed in that mentee about independent students, because this is the bit that I want the students to be more responsible for um, the information that they're putting into their OneNote. I have my OneNote set up that usually have different units, uh, unit one, unit two, unit three, and it is perfectly acceptable for them to go in to find a page that they want um, they can right click it and they can then copy the page into their own notebook. And once they've copied it into their own notebook, they then can highlight, you know, circle things, put their own notes and everything in it. So I really try and use it to make them a little bit more independent in terms of their note taking and they can copy anything from my content library. Sometimes I give them stuff from the content library, I distribute it out. Um, other times I'll say to them, I want you to go in and um, take notes on that page, go and copy it. So those are the, the sections. And once I found a teacher only section, that really kind of helped keep me organised because I can keep everything hidden from the kids until I need it. I also have a, a master team set up that has got a master notebook for my courses. So for my advanced hire, my hire, my national five. Um, and that sits there kind of year after year. And that means that when I am making my new class, my new teams and my new class notebook every year, I can easily just create it from an existing one and then copy over information. So kind of a, a master team and a master one note that I can copy pages over from. So I know everything relating to one particular course sits in that class notebook for when I am going to use it. So um the in terms of the tabs so we've got the tabs here i am very sorry if people are are familiar with this but we want to take people through the tabs so that they can see because we've got such a range of of, of people in today um, and their experience we have got a uh, home tab the insert the draw the view the help one and you're just asking a question and the magical class notebook one which you will only see if it is a class notebook made um with students if you're just making your own note, one note for planning, it wouldn't have that class notebook, but we're talking about class notebook today. So you should see that tab um, coming up. So I am just going to add um, in the collaboration space, I'm just going to put in a page. So I can drop down 
um, I can add a section. I'm just going to add a page in here. And I'm going to take you to the home um, section. So this is where you can change your font and everything there as well, add your bullet points. Um, but the one that probably I use most is the kind of task, the to do's. So if I um, call it, in fact, I think I've already got one made up. I'm flicking between two notebooks um, today. There we go. Is my to-do list. So um, I've got a little to-do list there. I've got a couple of tasks. I've also got to go and get the shopping um, from it. Um, let me just put in anything. Call Amanda and speak to Tablet Academy. So if I'm typing in the things um, that I'm needing to do, and I want them to be a checklist. If I just highlight my list and I click on the to do, that will give me a little box next to it. And as I do my tasks throughout the day, or students, for example, they can check them off. So you could make this page up, add the to do list, send it to your students, and say, you know, tick as we go through each unit or tick as we go through each task today. Um, and you can see that at any point because you can see all the students' notebooks at any one time. One of the other things is tags. And tags is in here beside the to-do list um, down here. And here are the tags. So if I go into um, a tags here, I've just put some um, work. So S3, today we are labelling the heart. And again, um, I can next to this one, I can click on it and I can then put that in as a, it's important. So it puts a little star next to them. I can also then create my own tags. So I can go in there and ask me to create one. So you could create it and give it the name of a teacher or give it a particular um, year group. Um, give it a date, anything like that. So let's call it September 2021. Um, and I'm just going to put a little clock next to it. Just going to move you out of the way, Amanda. Um, and then click create there. So now when I put in um, tasks for this month, um, I can then add a little custom tag that says September 21. And it's there. And when I come back, so if I'm looking for students work or I'm trying to find something, I can go into the search engine and I can search for um, anything that's important that's got a tag. So if I search for important, it will give me all the pages that has an important tag on it. I also said that was uh, for September. And it will give me all the pages um, that I've got those tags in them as well. So there we go there, it's in the, it's a tag that's there. So it sometimes just helps you to find stuff a little bit more. You maybe want to, to use the tags. The other part is the di dictate um, feature. And we'll talk a little bit more about accessibility throughout it as well. But the dictate function um, that's in this home tab along here um, really can cut down time for yourself, but also for students, students that maybe are um, struggle with writing, they can, they have lots of ideas in their head, but struggle to get them down on paper. The dictate is in, um, you know, get it in Word. I think it's now in PowerPoint. I need to double check that one. It yeah, that is in PowerPoint. Is, yes, and in yeah. Outlook as well. Yeah, it's in so many of the, the applications. Um, and if you click on dictate, I'm going to fix the to Yes, I wonder why it's not working for me just now. Access. I don't know why it's asking me why I'm need letting it access. I did this earlier. And the little, says Emma, but the little icon changes to show that it is recording. You'll see I am having to talk quite slow so that it's picking up my accent. The quieter the area, the better. But I use the dictate function lots when I'm doing my report cards. Put them straight in, then copy it and paste 
into the system we are using in school. Full stop. There we go. Done. So I do need to turn it off at the end of it. And it says Emma <laughs> twice. Um, I think that was me going A. Eh. Um, and you do have to double check it. But I mean, that's not bad um, for what I just went through and did. For some students, I get that this could potentially not work well for them. Um, particularly if they've maybe um, got difficulties with language, but it's definitely something that's worth trying out with and, and let your kids test it out. And I show these features to all my students because it can benefit all of them, but really impact on a couple of them that are in my class. But the fact that everybody uses it or does it or sees it means that it's not then stigmatised at all. So the dictate function that's in there is great. And as I said, that's how I do so many of my report cards nowadays. Um, the tab that I probably use the most is this insert tab that's here. Now, um, you'll see along the bottom, there's various different things that you can insert into your page. Um, I'm going to take you through them all um, at some point as we go through. Um, tables are great when it comes to organising in the collaboration space. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. In fact, uh, maybe, maybe just do that just now. Um, no, no, we'll, we'll come back to that later on. Um, but you can insert a table like you would do um, in Excel, although it's not quite got as many features of it. The inserting a file, um, that in the audio, I use most option, uh, most often. So when it comes to inserting a file, um, you click on the insert file and it will then ask you, there we go, what file do you want to select? I'm not going to insert one just now because um, it will bring up all of them and it's quite slow. But it asks you, how do you then want to insert that file? Do you want it to be uploaded and a link inserted? Do you want it as an attachment or do you want it as a printout? Now, for me, most of my files that I want the students to access, I insert them as a printout. So what you'll see here is if you insert a file as a file, oh, there we go. you can see I've inserted a Word document um, there. And you can see that Word document is sitting in there. I can click on that and it will take me to the Word document and it will open it up just like any Word document. I can go in, I can make changes to that document and the changes will appear on that file. What I've also got underneath though, is a PDF. And that's because I, when I inserted that uh, Word document, I inserted it as a printout. Now you can go straight to the insert printout button, but um, I went to the file and inserted it as a printout. And what it does is it takes that Word document, it's converted it to a PDF, and it has then inserted that onto my OneNote page. And the reason why I insert my documents as printouts is so that students don't then need to have Word or any other application to view that information. So all my files are printouts. They then don't need to have extra apps on their phone. They can go into OneNote and they can see everything that I want them to do. What it does is it inserts the, the file, uh, the printout, as images. So those images that are there, you'll see I can actually select them. And the problem is I can actually delete it. And sometimes that happens. Um, I insert a file, send it to a kid and the kids go, it's gone. And I go, what did you do? I don't know. And I know that they've deleted it. They still don't understand what the undo button does for some reason, <laughs> you know. But um, so I would recommend inserting printouts as a background. So if you click on the printout, right click, you'll get lots of different options there, but you'll see one that says set as a background. And when I click set as a background, I can no longer click on it. I can type over the top of my document. I can go to the draw and I can ink over the top of it, but I can't move it. So because I can't move it, the kids then can't delete it. So oh, I'll just take that off. And I go through and even if it's like a five page document, I just press the control button and I select all the ones that I want. Right click, 
set picture as background. And I do that with, with all of the stuff that kids are going to be accessing so that it doesn't get deleted off. But it stops students moving things about. It stops students from deleting things, especially if it's in their notebook. The other one that I have um, a lot of the time is inserting a picture. And if you go to insert and you go to picture there, not necessarily from anywhere, but the one that is the big difference is the camera. And are you going to get me? Oh, no, you're going to get my. Uh... Let's put in a photograph of my dressing gown. I'm in a tiny little room in the back um, and I've got the picture and I've taken my picture. And once it's done, there we go. It will ask me, do I want to insert that in? Insert all and it will then insert that picture into the OneNote. And obviously this is just a picture of a tiny little <laughs> cupboard bedroom that I'm hiding in. But again, I then set that as a background. And then what I can do is I can then go on and I can ink over the top of that and I can circle things. And just to show you um, the type of thing that, that I've done with that. Um, So I've done it with, um, for example, here, this was a flower dissection that I was doing in biology. Um, we had all the different parts of the flower. We took them all apart. We took a picture and then I was able to put that straight into the notebook. So for any kind of student work, um, for images of, of them doing graphs, I think actually I've got one here as well for, um, there we go. So you can upload pictures of student work as well. So insert photo um, image from camera is super easy to do. And it's something that I do all the time and my students do. And it helps us create a, a portfolio there of all the work that um, we do. So let's go back to the insert a tab. Let's get away from my uh, horrible room. Um, the other one, um for i mean you can insert links and things that's super obvious um the other one is audio and we're going to talk a little bit more about feedback but um and the benefits and the way that you use but if you just click on the page click the audio button you can see it is recording at the moment i can put in a little note here the work you've done is super fantastic well done for this task. Um, you maybe want to go back though and look at your spelling because there's a few issues with that. And it will put that audio file in that you can and you can listen back to. Um, for me, I use this probably most often with my senior pupils. Something that would maybe take me 10 minutes to type out or write out takes me one minute to, to say. Um, and the kids then have that and they can listen back again and again to it. And I think them being able to hear your voice when you're giving feedback really helps with their understanding of what they have to go on and do next. So you can go on and insert uh, audio there. Uh, is there anybody in the chat that, that's a maths teacher or primary teachers um, that needs help with the, the maths? because there is a math tool in here. If there's any mathematicians um, in there, um, the inserting, the math tools are phenomenal. So you can start with, I'm just gonna add a new page in there. And we'll just, I'll just put in math tools so I don't forget. Math or maths. The Americans call it math. Um, but you can either write in or you can type. And actually, if you go to the draw, I'm just using my finger. I'm pressing that little one for my finger. And let's say x um, plus y equals four. I don't even know if that's a, a thing or not. Um, I go to the little lasso, which is right here in the draw tab. If I then select my equation and then go back into my math tools, insert math. So I've done my equation, done my math tools. Um, it will <laughs> give it. That isn't an equation, right? Let's find a better one. Let's do. Um, 
I think it is an equation. I think it's just taking the wee squiggle above the x and the y is an x squared plus no, y. Just says fix it. Oh. Let's say um, x. Oh, I need to have my pen on. Um, x. In fact, anything. 3 plus 4 equals. I mean, it'll do something as simple as that um, there. And then if I click on my insert maths. So it's not, this is not working well today. My four is not very good. I've done this numerous times and today it's not working the way that it should do. Right, x plus three equals seven. Just do a normal seven. I'll lasso it. My lasso is not working. Go to the insert tab, go to maths, uh, select an action. So it then gives me the option, what do I want to do? I want to solve, I want to find out what x is. Solve for x and it's telling me x is four. So I've got the answer. But as a student, I don't necessarily know how to do it. So show the steps. It will show the steps for it. So it's telling me what I needed to do. Subtract three from both sides. Subtract three from seven to get four. Then what it will do is, and this is where it kind of saves you time, generate a practice quiz. So it will then put a form in of, um, so three questions. You can make them as many as you want. You can make it up to 10, whatever you want. It will create a, a, a forum and it will insert a forum solve for x so it'll do lots of solves for x there and it's making the form so as a student you as a, as a teacher you don't need the, the time to do that what you can also do is you can look at the graph of that um straight up and down but again for for math teachers and this is one that if you're in a school and you're not a math teacher it's definitely worth showing the math teachers um what it can do um, and if you're in a primary school, having a little play with it yourself, because the fact that it will take one sum and will generate quiz and show you those steps really is, um, if I go back to the, you know, solve for X. I can then, you know, I can then just cut that out um, drag steps or press enter so I can drag them in there and the steps are then in that notebook. So the students know how to solve it as well. So that's the amount of work that I'm having to do is, is reduced because of it. And it does have immersive reader as well. And we're going to talk a little bit about immersive reader. So it will then give it in a way that for students that maybe are struggling with the reading, it might help them. So we'll look at that. What time are we at? 10 to 5. Oh, and I'm only at the insert. Um, right. Next one. Next thing. So the next bit on the insert is the stickers. Who doesn't love a sticker? Go into the stickers. You can insert whatever sticker you want. You can see I'm inserting stickers all over the place here. Um, there's lots of different stickers. Um, oh, I'm the scientist, so I like those planets um, that are in there. But there's also ones that you can do for feedback um, that says nice work. You can change it to whatever you want. Uh, well done, Amanda. And you can personalise them as well. Uh, and it will put them in there too. So um, everybody loves a sticker. Even my students that are uh, 18 years old at the end of their year love a sticker. You can put it wherever you want. And I tend to have stickers at the top so that I know that I've gone through and had a look at it and marked it um, that's in there. So the, the stickers are, are fantastic um, in there as well. The draw tab we've already looked at. As I said, you've got your text and um, you're drawing there. If you are, I have a pen, so I just have to lift up my pen and I can start uh, inking on it. Just pick the colour. There we go. But if you're using your finger on a device, um, then just press the mouse there. And now I'm using my finger actually for it and not the pen. Um, if you've got an iPad, it will have that one where you can ink on it as well. Um, if you don't have a touch screen you can still do it with your mouse 
Um, and if you've got an Apple Pencil, let me work with that as well on an iPad or any kind of tablet if you've got a, a stylus that's in there also. The lasso I said there was to select anything, so I can go around and I can select all those things and kind of group them together and then move the whole thing over. It's just an option. Um, and ink into text as well. You've got a ruler um, in there, which again, sometimes comes in handy and you've got the degrees. So um, as I said, playing about with the things that are in there. The view tab. Now, the... The view tab, you can go on. I'm just going to insert a, a new page. So I've got a new blank one. Take my ruler away. I need to go back in. Take my ruler off. Um, the view tab is where you can change, customise your page. So if you need to have green page for a, for a student, um, you can do that so that it maybe works and they want to type on a green page. That's easy to do for them. You can give them lines on that page as well. That's a really bright colour of green, which isn't doing so well for my eyes. There we go. Um, you can rule, change it. You can have ruled lines. You can have graph paper um, on there with the backgrounds. Uh, we'll just go back to none. You can set it so that you always have any page that you add will always have lines. You don't have to do that to every page that's on it. Um, the new window. I use this when I'm marking. If I click new window, I then get a whole new OneNote coming up. So I can then have two different notebooks. There's my test team with my mum in there. And I can have the two of them there. So I can be marking one and looking at the marking scheme on the other rather than having to flick between two different notebooks on the one page. So that's something that's worth um, noting on it. Authors as well. So authors um, will tell you when somebody has added something. I'm actually thinking, Amanda, the best place for that is probably going to be in our, um, there we go. You can see that that was our, our planning one note that we've got here. Take off the lasso. Um, you can see there, it tells me that MBP, um, as Amanda, has been on that page and has put something in. If I click hide authors, it will take that away. That is really good for checking that you know, students are doing their own work. It'll tell you who the person that's logged in was was doing it. So if you're working collaboratively in an area, you can see exactly who has typed what. Um, it used to give you a date stamp as well. But I'm not seeing that at the moment. I maybe need to. It used to give you a date stamp, but I think that was maybe in the, on on the uh, desktop version as well. But you can see who's done the the typing. And the other one is this. Um, Two more, the replay one. So if I go and have a look at my mum's one and I go into the content library and I'm just going to go into my board notes and I've got my cell structure. Now, replay is really good for showing kids, but also if you're wanting to show them something that you've done. So I've got a label diagram here of a, a cell, a very badly drawn one. If I click replay and I select the area, okay, it will then put it all down in the order that I have drawn it and labelled it. So I could be showing this again and again and again and be talking through it while it's on the board with the whole class. Or you could be saying to the students if they're on their own device, highlight, replay it back um, to see a whole series of stages. So if you're building up maybe a flow chart, that would be really good for that. I use it for labelling things. Um, so the replay is good. And then lastly, um, but by no means least at all, is immersive reader. Um, Sarah, can I just interrupt on me a second? We've had a question from Mrs Hutchinson, mm -hmm. and she's asked, when you select the lines or squares um, mm -hmm. for the background, does the writing go along the lines when you are typing in the text box? Not automatically. So I'll just add a page in there. I'm going to put real lines in. Let's make them relatively big, because remember, you can you can make the page whatever you want. So you would have to click down there and do your typing and then click on the next line and do your typing next line. So that's how it would be. That's how how it is. Oh, that one's slightly out. See, so it's not it's not exactly on it. And it might at one point end up out. Hope that answers your question. So it doesn't actually do it. The, the type the lines is probably best for in the draw tab with the finger on the tablet 
um, for students forming letters or something like that. Finger inking. And you can kind of draw on the lines. So the typing is not going to be perfect on those lines. Um, immersive reader, I wanted to ask in the chat, um, who knows about Immersive Reader? Like, I, I'm, I'm assuming people know about it, but who's used it? Have you used it? Have you used it with your students? We have we have typing going on in the chat. What's so the typing? I um, I've not used it, but it looks amazing. I use this with my pupils with a visual impairment. So yeah, we've we've shared that this with our pupil support department um and let them see it and then they can help the students with it and i think when people see immersive reader they go wow like this is amazing there's so much that that it can do um i can i'm just going to go back in there to a page so i'm just going to type a little um but in it um my name is sarah clark i am here to help so any typing that you've got in your page if you click on immersive reader um, it will come up in this. Oh, I, I'm I here to help. Um, it will come up and it looks so much better. And it, if you're on, if a student has their own device, it will save or even on the online version, I think it will save their preferences as well. So the last time I was in it, it's bringing up the same um, preferences. And I'm just actually going to come out here a little second, go back to my because I've not got my Sound sharing, there we go. I need to change my typing, that's annoying me. Um, there. And if I click play. My name is Sarah Clark. I am here to help. So for a student to be able to, you know, listen back to their own work or listen to the instructions that you're giving them through Immersive Reader, you know, it, it really breaks down those barriers. You can click on the settings and you can speed it up. My name is Sarah Clark. I'm here to help. Uh, you can make it female. I'm going to make her slower again. Um, that's on it. So they can change those preferences depending on what. My name is Sarah Clark. Um, you can go in and where it says text preferences, this is where you can change things. So if you've got students that need filters, um, we've got lots of students have yellow filters, green filters, red filters, um, and it's got lots of different colours there. They can find a background that they, that they find is easiest for them to read. Um, you can change the font to whatever is preferable for them to read. I know that A, with a, a, the letter A like that, is not, and A, that's because the, the A letter um, isn't particularly well for people with um, dyslexia. I think reading it like that is really not good, and also for primary kids, the, the Comic Sans, although... You know, there's the big it's Comic Sans, I think makes a big difference in how it looks for, for students. Um, the grammar options. So you'll notice I've got a couple of words there that are in purple. These are my nouns. Um, I think for, I can turn them off. And if you're doing a, a task on adjectives, there are none in there. Um, but I can go and check if there are any verbs in it. So if you've got a whole passage, there are my verbs that are appearing um, for me extremely helpful when I'm helping my children because I don't know the difference between them. I think I was a generation that kind of didn't get a lot of grammar stuff. Um, people that need help with reading, uh, with reading as well, you can put the syllables in so it will break the word down for you. And you can also, I'm going to just take those nouns, those verbs off. You can change the colour of them as well, actually. So if, if you don't want them to red, but want them to be blue, you can do. Um, I'm going to take the verbs off. I'll put my syllables back. Um, and this bit at the end, again, you can make it so that it's one line, two line, three line. So helping your students to, to read, um, but you can translate as well. So if that's a uh, student that has got English as their second language, I can change it to their spoken language, French. I can do it by word. So name in French, nom, and I can click on it and I can hear what the word is. Um, or if I go back, 
I can do the whole document. And this is only a sentence, but I'm going to show you a little bit more in a minute with it. Click play. Je m'appelle Sarah Clark. Je suis là pour vous aider. Um, and it will change it. And you can go from the original to the French, backwards and forwards. Um, and that one for students with a second language really is really helpful. That picture dictionary as well. So when I'm changing one word, I can um, I get a picture as well. That's all done by BoardWorks. Now, that's if I've got some typing on the page. I'm um, teaching high school. I've got those documents inserted. Remember, I talked about those documents. I'm inserting PDFs all the time. I am inserting Word documents. So this is the summary sheet for um, my higher students. There we go. So I've got the Word document in here. Move you over there, Amanda. Fly you over. Whoosh. Um, and it's inserted as a printout. Now, if I go to Immersive Reader now, the Word document works anyway, but even though it's still in the PowerPoint, in the OneNote, everything there is still being picked up and I can still listen. Hi, human biology unit, one human document. And I can pick where I want it to be from there as well. Um, Stem cells have been used to grow skin for skin grafts used in burns victims. So it's going through it all. I can then go through. So again, I've got a document that's typed up. I have a student who has English as a second language. They come in, they speak French. I can change the whole document. There we go. From original to French. For them. And they Biologie humaine supérieure unité, une cellule humaine, une division et différenciation dans les cellules humaines suite à la formation du zygote formé par la journée. There we go. Um, no idea what she's saying. But I'm also not then changing my original document. I'm not having to spend time and, and, and get the whole translation done of a document. I'm giving it to the student. They can go and do the translation. And in, in a subject like mine that's very vocabulary, um, there's a lot of vocabulary in it. A student coming in who, who's not speaking English, um, being able to say to them, go and learn it in your own native tongue first and then we'll work on the English afterwards really means that they're still understanding the biology and then they can work on their English because they're doing that um, alongside as well. And it will do that with a Word document. It will do that with a PDF as well. It will actually, this is a photo of the SQA um, thing. So I've done a screenshot of a document and if I go into Immersive Reader for a photo of a document, um, it's there as well. It's not laid out the same way, but the information is all there and I can click down here. It's the cancer cells bit that I want to read from and I can then go and it cancer cells divide excessively because they do not respond. OK, so it will do it with documents you insert. Um, pages from a textbook. I saw I saw uh, Mike Tholson once showing us how to do it and it was um, um, Harry Potter and they had put Harry Potter in. So if you've got kids that you're wanting to read and with the immersive reader as well, my daughter uses immersive reader, immersive reader a lot of the time, um, whether it's in one note or in word, to listen back to what she's typed because you'll hear a mistake before you will see a mistake. So she, she uses it all the time. Um, and yourself, have you been given a large document of 40 odd pages that you have to read through um, and you're like that, oh man, well, put it in Immersive Reader and as I said, you'll get Immersive Reader in lots of things, but if it's in OneNote, stick it in Immersive Reader and go and, you know, make the dinner at the same time with it going on in the background. Um, and I think it, it, it just makes it so much easier. Right, last thing, because I'm well aware of time, because we're going to have a little break. Um, There's one wee question, Sarah. We've had yeah. a wee question here. Reading photos of documents is amazing. Would it do that with picture books? That's a very good question. I've not tried it. I don't know if it will take the picture, but it should pick up the words. But we, the I find the di if there's diagrams on the page, it, it struggles to kind of know where the words are in relation to that diagram. Um, but give it a go. Give it a go. Well, maybe, Amanda, if you've got a... Well, maybe have a wee try of that at break, um, during the break to see if we can insert a picture and see if it does that with a picture book and see how it goes. Um, last little bit is embedding. So 
up until um, probably about 18 months ago, maybe uh, maybe about, I'm lying, maybe about three years ago, I didn't know what the word embed meant. Um, you need special codes and everything. When it comes to OneNote, you can embed in OneNote with a web link. Um, YouTube. So if I get a link from YouTube, um, let me just go in here. I don't know if I've even got one open. Uh, YouTube. Let me find a video. Probably should have already had a link or, uh, in there. Messy frustrated by PSG already, already. Let's see why he's frustrated and we'll put that in our... Um, Right, I'm just going to pause it so it doesn't go through because we don't really need to listen to that. Take the web address that's there. It's control C. Go into my uh, page. Control v. He's losing his balance. I'm not sure if Hakimi comes on. I now know why he's frustrated. <laughs> and the video link is in there. So it's given me the title and the video is in there. And actually, that will just play inside the OneNote. So it doesn't take the students out to YouTube. It will just put that video in there. Now you still have the bits at the end that can take you elsewhere. It, you know, it doesn't take away all those links. Hi, I'm Jane. Are you and your students can But it's putting it straight in there and it's just a web link. You can do the same with files um, in OneDrive. So if you've got a file in OneDrive, um, this is a Word document that we have and I can scroll through the Word document Myself and Amanda did this with our training one, just to show you when we were planning. We have got the PowerPoint in there for the session that we're doing today. Amanda put the link from OneNote in there, and it's just it's a bit slow today. Um, there we go. And I can go through the PowerPoint bit by bit, slide by slide. So if you're sharing a PowerPoint with the students and you want them to go through it, they can do that in OneNote. No need for an extra um, link in there. So you can embed from just sharing a link. Couple of other things. If you are a Sway user, we did Sway last week. Again, the web link for Sway, put the Sway on a OneNote page. Um, and it will, again, that's, that's set out like a kind of a, a PowerPoint, um, but that's a Sway that's in there. If you are using forums, you can see they're in there. So you can put in a sway and put in a forum um, and the students can go through it. And that is a live forum embedded. Um, I am a big, big fan of Flipgrid. So I've got a um, grid in there. You can do it with grids. You can do it with um, individual videos. Oh, I think it's just taking its time to pull it through today. Flipgrid videos can get embedded in it anyway. I use that for my feedback. Um, uh, simulations, scientists in there. I have got PHET um, do their simulations and I've got a live simulation sitting in my OneNote that the kids can interact with um, that's there. Play it and it will start doing stuff. Uh, stimulate the neuron. Um, also, those of you, there you go. So it is live in it. This is exactly the same as what they would see on the website. Um, Wakelet. If you are a Wakelet user, um, here is our stem cells one on Wakelet. Stick the Wakelet in there. And again, it's the web link. It's not the sharing link. And ThingLink, Amanda is a big fan of ThingLink, as am I. Um, take the web address for the ThingLink, put the ThingLink in the OneNote, and then everything is interactive and you can go through it and embedding things, and this is what I love about OneNote. I can add anything to it, any resource, any media, things that I can't share with the students as paper copies, but it's organised in my OneNote. I can put that thing link in a team. Yeah, I can, but are my kids going to then lose it? Yes. Are they going to then be telling me, I can't find that, and they're all chatting underneath it, saying, I can't find it, I can't find it. This here, I can say to them, go to unit one of the OneNote, go to the page that says thing link, and you will find it there. Right, I'm uh, stopping for now. That was a lot of information. That was a lot of information. Um, we were going to do a quick um, show and tell of the mech, but maybe we should have a break first. Yep. And let folks uh, have a 
bit of a stand up, a walk around, bit of breathing, hard going sitting at a computer for this length of time, especially if you've been working all day. So go to the loo, get a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, a biscuit maybe. And uh, what will we see you back here in about 10 or 15 minutes, Sarah? Yeah, about 25 past, give people 10 minutes um, just to take a wee breather. Um, if you want to have a wee play about with OneNote, you can. We'll see if we can get a, a picture book in there and see what it looks like um, and come back because I'm just aware of the, the time because I have to jump off because um, I have another session coming up. So I might have to kind of whiz through the 10 minute stuff and then pass the last bit on to you, Amanda. Yeah, no problem at all. OK, so we'll see everybody in about 10, 15 minutes. Yep. 10 minutes, 10, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. 25 past, yeah. 25 past, fantastic. Yeah, I'm going to go and look for a picture book. Me too. <laughs>
I went looking for a picture book and I couldn't find it. I have one and it's in our OneNote, Sarah, you're going to love it. It's one of my right. favourite stories. I don't know if you can see it because I've got background on, but it's the tale of the wee Maudie who wanted to ken who are in his head. Who are in his head? All right. <laughs> Brilliant. It's an hour one. Yeah, it's, uh, I just created a new page. The tale, or the, see, now I probably can't read it because it's a massive reader. <laughs> It'll be like, what's this language? <laughs> I never thought. <laughs> it's not in English. Oh, it was the first book I've got in the pile. You couldn't find any text on the page. Oh, wait, I'll see if I can find another story. <laughs> I, I don't know if it is finding it. Hold on, I'll see if I can find another story. I'm sure I've got another one. Hold on. Okay, I've got hedgehogs this time. Then add them in. My picture books are not. Let's see. No. Let me stop trying and see if I can insert something in and see. <clears throat> no, I'm not. Of course, I've taken a picture from the page that doesn't have any actual pictures. Oh, here we go. There's one. There's Haiti. Got an amazing idea. Sometimes, it, from a picture as well, I think it can take a wee while for it to find it as well. Like, it takes a wee while for the OCR to kick in. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I've just um, taken a few pictures and put them in our one note. That same page. Oh, did I cut the top off of Betty? Did. Oh, no, oh, she is. So for those of us that are that are here, how are we feeling? A bit, uh, are we feeling okay? Are we feeling a bit overwhelmed? Have we picked up something new? Great first half, amazing. Thanks, Niall. Is I'm I'm very aware it's a lot of information and one note does take time. Like don't try and do everything at once with one note. It's really about kind of um doing little bits and trying it. Uh, can you embed and edit an Excel sheet in one note without opening Excel? You would need to insert so insert file and it would put in the Excel. I have never actually done an embed from OneNote. So if you embedded the file, could you edit it? No, I don't think you can edit it on an embed. You'd need to go to the original file to edit it. If it's embedded. Okay. 
I've inserted a file before and you still have to use Excel. Yes, you would still have to use Excel. I went down and got a drink of juice. <laughs> Took a picture, I need to put that on Twitter. I have one note um, and one note purple. I'll put my one note purple on tonight. Nice. What are we doing for time? Say it's 25 past. Do you want yeah. to do the bit about maybe the examples would be a better? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'll do that yeah. and then you can um, go to the, the, the mech after that. So I um, wanted to show you some examples of kind of uses um, and ways that um, I have been I, I have been using it. Um, right, where did I put them? Now, there are lots of people that have amazing looking OneNote pages um, in their content library. Um, and Amanda being one of them, these are some of Amanda's um, OneNote pages, how she's using it. So for instructions, and you can see there, She's got a picture, she's then got everything that's needed. She's put a video in there as well um, with the instructions of what the students have got to do. And it's saying, you know, click on this to watch the video. And as we said, you just go straight in and the video is happening on that page for the students. They can also click on the links that are given to them. Um, so in terms of giving out, so that's your, oh, it's kind of frozen a little bit. Have I? Oh no, you're still moving, so it's not me that's frozen. Oh. It's just my one note that's frozen. I'll just close it down and open it up again. One note for Windows 10. So, well, we'll just wait on that starting up. So, I use it to collaborate. My students go and do an experiment together. I put an Excel file in the page and then they insert all their data into that Excel file on the page or into a table on the OneNote. So we're all working on it at the one time. I use it for feedback. Um, I use it, sorry, I give feedback within OneNote, um, typing it, making audio feedback, inking it um, on top of it. I use OneNote as my whiteboard. I'll show you that just now. It keeps me organised, it keeps the students organised. It's my own personal planner. Um, you will see when we go into the, the one notes at the side here, um, you know, Sarah's diary is in there and I have everything in there from the minutes of meetings. Um, I take, if I go to an event, I take pictures on my phone and I insert that in there as well um, from it. So it is my planner. Um, Escape rooms, I mean, that's a whole nother session on how to make escape rooms because you have to password protect the page. Um, so in a OneNote, um, if you go into a page, let me just go into this page. If you right click a page, you can, if I could not find it. No, no, I can't find it. I'm wondering if because my one has just kind of crashed that that's causing me a little problem. Oh no, wait then. It's a section. Right click the section and it will say password protection and you can add a password to that section um, so that you have to put something in. So I have questions in the page for my escape room. So that's a, that's a whole nother session on an escape room and making one note escape rooms um, from it. Malcolm Wilson has a great blog. Should actually try and find his, his blog on it with some examples um, from them. We've got a question in the chat, Sarah. Within mm -hmm. 
uh, my local authority, kids can't use YouTube. If I paste a link for a video into OneNote, can they watch it there? No. I, can they not? No. I, so my kids just can't access YouTube at all. So even if it's in OneNote, it's still the link that's going to YouTube. You can embed in um, video from stream. So your own video that we've got sitting in stream. Um, if you have got um, click, view. click view or yeah, eScoil ones, which are all on kind of the, the click view um, waste to waste platform, they will all embed, they will all work fine. Um, but unfortunately, yes, if your students can't get access to YouTube in school, even if it's in a OneNote, it still won't because it's just it's just showing you the link in there. It's not actually storing it anywhere. There's a top tip from Miss Douglas saying they use video.link to convert YouTube links. That's worth a try. Checking that one out. Yeah. Um, and just a whole portfolio of student evidence. I set my assignments, um, set when I set a team's assignment, I set a page from OneNote and it goes out to every individual student. Um, the... I mean, Amanda's pages look, they're amazing. She's got stickers in there. There's little, you know, she's got links, but she's also got her QR codes um, in there. In terms of my pages um, that are in there for, so I'll give you an example of how I use it. I said uploaded pictures. That was a student's graph. And you can see there with the feedback, I've put in some, I've, I've circled all the points that they got correct. And I've put in a little audio recording in there as well. And I've also put in, that can be written, that can be typed um, in there. That was just a, a document. I inserted the document, deleted the original document, set the page, uh, set it as a printout, sorry, deleted the original document, set it as a background, and then you've just got that image there um, for them. Board notes. So I use OneNote as my whiteboard all the time. Um, I'm just looking for a, an image there. So this was a a screenshot um, that I took and we labelled it up as a class. I'll actually show you my actual board notes as well. Um, the test team with mum has my board notes in it. So I've got a tab that says board notes. And you've seen the sales structure one. So I've got, you know, pictures there that we labelled together. I've got some typing that was an essay that they'd done. Um, what I have as well is I have lots of PowerPoints. Um, I'm a biologist, I have lots of PowerPoints and I'm not sitting talking through all of these, but I'm putting these up. Um, so I insert the PowerPoint as a printout and then I can annotate around it. And the benefits of having my OneNote as my whiteboard is that you can see this is this is actually what my board notes look like for my students. Um, they can go through each bit of the course and they can see all my um, kind of highlighted bits, scratchy animations. That was a brain dump that we were just going through. Now, they're not getting the audio that goes with it, um, but they are getting all those notes and all the information and the bits that I've highlighted um, and bits that I've added into it. And they can go back and see them at any point. So it keeps all my board notes organised for me, but also organised for them. Because um, normally it's not the thing that we share with the students. So they've got a lovely, nice PowerPoint, but did they get all the bits that you've pointed out that you want them to remember? So for me, a huge one is board notes. And if I just, when I'm using them at the front of my class, I just go full, full screen. I'm going to go full screen. I still got all my pens there we go, on the top. So I can, they're, they're all still there. So that was, that's the, the, the huge um, win for me in terms of um, board notes and annotating and, and, and everything there that the students can then just go in um, and do. The, I think that's kind of, I'm trying to think if there was anything else there to give you some examples of them. Amanda's ones were the ones that all look nice and pretty. <laughs> well, just another question from Miss Aird. Sorry for all the questions. No problem. We love questions. To write on it as a whiteboard, do you have to use the mouse uh, for draw or can you use the smart board and smart board pen? I have a OneNote open uh, up in my Promethean panel all day every day with my little ones and they use it to draw for letter formation and, you know, they can go to their own section or in the content library or collaboration space, depending on what we're doing and 
put it in there and they use it as a whiteboard so they know where to click on to draw and just use it. So literally anything with a touch screen you can use. So with a mouse or with your Promethean panel, smart board pen, iPad, anything you've got. So a lot of the time I use it with the assignments, but let's say I had a page there and it was letter formation. Um, let me just, just go, I'll just do it in board notes so that I've got a page. Let's say, um, make the letter F and add, oh, and add three words. I know that's very small. <laughs> I can't even, I can't even type myself today. So if you were doing that, that was what you wanted your students to do. Um, you could go into the view, add in your ruled lines. I'm going to make them really big because it's younger students. OK, then what you can do is that class notebook tab. You can go to distribute the page. I can distribute the page out to my students. Um, so I could do this as a, as a whiteboard task and it would work with the Promethean. I want them to do it as, a, as an assessment. So it'll ask me, do you want, where do you want it to go? I want it to go into the assessments. I click distribute. And then when I go into my student Blair's one and I go into assessments, he has a copy of that page, although the lines didn't come up on it. I'll need to check why that didn't happen. Um, but he has a copy of that page. Oh, it's not even sent out. I wonder if I've been too quick. Let's check Morgan's one. Yeah, I think it just needs to sync, doesn't it? Maybe it's just been. Yeah, it's just maybe not synced quite yet. It is a little bit slow and do that, but it will send it out. And then obviously that's 20 kids. Um, if I go to review student work, I can then go and find that page that I distributed to all my students. I know it's in the assessments. I know it was called make the letter. I think I was just too quick. And I can go through it student by student. So there's Blair's one, there's Morgan's one, and I can see everything that they've done on that. And I actually can lock the page afterwards. So see if I don't want them to go and change something, I can then go in and lock the page and they can't lock it after. And if you're doing that in conjunction with Teams assignments, it, it really is just amazing. I think that's probably all that I want you to kind of go through if you want to go into the Meg. Yep, absolutely. So um, I'm going to quickly show you, uh, you have got a code that you can um, redeem for tonight. And I would highly recommend you go and redeem this code because you get credit in the MEC and you can actually upload all this information to your GTCS profile for your uh, professional update, all of that. So I'm going to quickly show you. I'm going to share my screen. I will show you the code with you in a little second. So there's a couple of ways to do it. I usually have um, I've logged into Glow. So this is my launch pad and I'm going to go to my Scotland launch pad. And there is the mech there. Click on this little eye in the top left hand corner. Add to my launch pad. And I can click on that. Now it remembers who I am, so I'm automatically logged in. Um, so I use my Glow credentials to log into the mech. And when I click on here in my prof, there's a, my profile and then there's redeem achievement code. If I click on here in this space is where we are going to give you a code to redeem for tonight. Um, so we're going to give you just two or three minutes. You can do that. The other way to log into the, the, MEC, the Microsoft Education Centre is just to search for it. Click on the Microsoft Education Centre. And as I said, it always remembers me because I've logged in so many times and I like to save. The same thing, click on your little um, icon up here, redeem achievement code, and then enter your, uh, enter your achievement code and then click on redeem. So I'm just going to quickly come and put it in the chat. Oh, let me stop sharing. And I think I've copied it. I've got the code there, Amanda. Oh, have you? Brilliant. I'll just put it um, in there. Uh, let me just, I think I've got a wee screen. Yes, I do. Hold on a second. Oh, no. It's going in black again because it's taken oh, off the white screen. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So here we go. This is uh, on the PowerPoint. So it's 
T-NRCA96B21. Redeem that code. And it'll log it as well for your GTC, um, your GTCS, because then it's you've got a log of it that you've done that, and then you can just upload that PDF afterwards to it. I noticed um, somebody in the chat had said that they had a student who, um, uh, password protecting um, sections in the collaboration space. Now, one thing you can do is you can go in and you can let me just get to my one note again um you can go in and you can set different groups only if students can access it so let's say i've got group one there i'm going to add another section called group two and in the class notebook tab along the top there is this little notebook there that says manage notebooks now if i click that it will ask me, it usually ask me to log in, but it gives me this notebook here. So this is the notebook that I've got using and I can change the name of any of the student sections there. Where it says collaboration space permissions, um, there, if I click that, it will show me in my collaboration space, I have got group one and group two, and it tells me who can access it. So I can add a section if I wanted group three, but I can click on the little edit button and I can see group one, I only want this student and this student to um, be able to access and edit it. And I can make it that the others can still see the information if I want to. Click save. And that means that Morgan's the only student that can work in group one. And if I then go back in to group two, there, I can make it so that that's the one that Blair can go in and edit and his you know, group or whatever. So you, you don't have to set passwords for those areas. You can actually set the collaboration space in the manage notebook, which is that little bit here in the class notebook tab. And you can go in and then you can set those uh, permissions for the collaboration space. Just a wee caveat, guys, the parent and guardian links don't work for us within Glow. If you're out with Glow, they will work. They won't work for us within Glow um, because that's not been set up for us. So if you see that and go, oh, get excited, um, yeah, it, it won't work. You'd be disappointed. <laughs> and you can add a section to every kid's notebook there as well. Right, I'll stop sharing. I am going to have to love you and leave you because I have got another session that I have to go and um, get on. So thanks everybody for turning up. I hope you found what I've been sharing um, helpful for you tonight. I'll leave you in the very capable hands of Amanda on her own and Niall in the um, background. Please uh, redeem that code and, and they've got a feedback form as well. And it really is helpful to get feedback. This is only the second session that myself and Amanda um, have been doing as, as part of the MIE experts working with, with Tablet Academy. So any feedback really would be um, appreciated so much um, on that from it. So um, Amanda, I'll leave you with you and I'll speak to you later on. Fantastic. The <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you, thank you. Take care, guys. Bye, bye. Okay, so I am going to get everybody to use their brains a little bit now and I am going to share um, something in the chat if you click on it and I'm going to share my screen. We have got a little quiz. It's not difficult, I promise you, uh, for you to have a little go at. Here it is. It is the OneNote Class Notebook Challenge. It's 14 quick fire questions. Click the link in the chat. And then if I go here, here's your pin. I'm waiting on my players. Just for a bit of fun and uh, a little bit of light relief because that was a huge amount of information that you got tonight about um, OneNote Class Notebook. I don't know if you can hear the sound. Oh, I might have to stop sharing. I don't know if you can hear it. Hold on, let me share again. Do that again. Did that work? Is anybody in my cahoot? Let me 
Yeah, yeah, Amanda. Sorry, mine is saying um, that it doesn't recognise the pin, and then oh. yeah, I'm losing connection as well. Oh, okay. Let me just, uh, that's strange. Let me just say again. There we go. Try again. Yeah. Yep. See if this one works. Oh, right, here we go. We've got a new like pin. One seven zero five three five zero. Let's see if we can get this working. I'm in. Yes, we have a brave puffin. A wise raccoon. I like it. Oh, gentle impala. Anybody else want to play? Oh, pretty lobster. Oh, fuzzy sable. Nice. Oh, now we've got a competition. Mighty elk. Okay. I have high hopes for this competition. Get ready. There we go. Which colour do you associate with one note? Only 10 seconds, so it's a quick one. Oh, well done, purple. Excellent, get ready for the next question. Fuzzy Sable, well done. Oh, it's tight though. Here we go, question two. Which section is good to save resources for learners? Content library. It's quick. Here we go. Fuzzy Sable still in the lead. Next question. Can teachers view each student's private space? Yes or no? Oh, yes. That was very quick. Oh my goodness, Breathe Puffin, you are on fire. Can students view each other's private spaces? Yes or no? That's right. No, they can't. Fuzzy Sable is on a, a roll here. Can teachers customise the sections that appear in a student's private space? Ooh, yes, yes, and students can also change them. Fuzzy Sable still in the lead. What must you click in order to finalise a new class notebook? Great, go submit or next. Great. Oh, we've got a new leader, Brave Puffin. Well done, you are on a high, highest answer streak of six. My goodness. What do you click in order to create a new section? It's the plus sign. Oh my goodness me. I wonder who Brave Puffin is. You're doing so well. What do you click in order to add a new page? Add page. Some trick questions, these. Here we go. Which menu should you use to distribute new sections and or pages to students' private spaces? Class notebook, insert, review or history. Class notebook, well done. Wise raccoon, you're doing well. Can you record audio and video straight onto a page? Yes or no? 
Yes, you can. Can you create links to other notebook pages as well as to websites? Yep. Oh, on a skater, you're making a comeback. From which menu can you change the color of or add ruler lines to a page? View. From which menu can you add custom page templates? It is insert. From which menu can you find the zoom tools to enlarge and decrease the contents of a page? View, insert, review or home. It's view. Oh my goodness me, there we go. Brave Puffin, well done. Let us know who you are so we can give you a round of applause. Absolutely fantastic. Goodness me. Brilliant. Well done, everybody. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, so, oh, wait till I just close it down. Brilliant. Okay, let's see what else have we got for you. We've got 10 minutes left. We've given you some examples. Let me do some top tips for you. Okay, here we go. Let me share my screen. So there are literally so many top tips that Sarah and I uh, struggle to kind of pick a few of our top ones. But basically, one of the ones that I would definitely recommend is create a one note to play with. Create a team, create a class notebook attached to your team and have a play about with it. Try things, upload, use audio, use dictate, just investigate what it does. It's That's what I did when I first started using it. Insert files as printouts and then make those images and printouts and backgrounds so that your students and learners can't delete them. Great option to do. Leave audio feedback to save time and also to, for me, for little learners, it helped them become really independent. They knew that they could click on that little icon that had audio and they could listen to my feedback. It's a real time saver as well. Um, and have students download the app on their phones if you've got older students. I've got the app literally on every device that I have. Um, so it's a really, really good thing for them to be able to do it as well, if they can. Um, what else have we got? Thank you so much for coming along. I'm going to talk to you again about um, the MEC. Please take time to redeem that code, log in, sign up if you haven't done already. Redeem your code, tweet about it. Um, if I go back and where are we on the mic? There we are. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Tweet, copy, uh, tag us into your Twitter um, feeds or your tweets. Tweet Tablet Academy. We love to see what everybody's doing. So um, don't go away. We have a little feedback form for you to do. I don't know, Niall, could you pop the link into the chat for us? What's Redeem in there, thank you. Brilliant. Redeem your code. Redeem, redeem, redeem. You get credit for it. Upload it to your GTCS profile and um, make sure you give us your feedback. Thank you so much for coming along tonight. We're stopping a little bit early, but that's OK. Hopefully you don't mind that. If you've got any questions, pop them in the chat and we can definitely answer them for you. Let me uh, stop sharing so I can see the chat. Fabulous. Well done, everybody. Brave Puffin, well done, Tanya. Fantastic. Definitely tweet that you were Brave Puffin. You did a brilliant job. Amazing. And this code that you're redeeming will get you certified um, Microsoft Innovative, Innovative Educator status. So you get, if you go into the MEC, in fact, I'll show you my uh, profile and um, let me show you. 
Where are we? Here we are. So if I show you, if you go in here, I click on my profile, because you've come along to this course tonight, I've done a few courses on the Mech. There's so much on the Mech. It's absolutely a fantastic source of self-paced CLPL. Um, but because you've come tonight and the length of this session, you should be a certified Microsoft Innovative Educator. So I did mine in 2017. You can click on view details, view certificate, take a screenshot, tweet it, tag us. We love to hear and see what everybody's doing. Um, absolutely amazing, amazing job tonight. So definitely do that. You're very, very welcome. Fantastic. Any questions from anybody? Does anybody use OneNote already? Has anybody picked up anything new tonight that you might go away and try? Pop it in the chat. Teaching wee ones definitely dictate um, to write stories and then immersive reader to read it back. It's incredible what the wee ones can pick up and say, oh, I, I don't want to just say monster. I want to put in green monster. All I helped them was just to put in where the extra words should go and then they click on dictate and start talking again. Immersive reader is phenomenal. And those math tools, absolutely brilliant. And immersive reader reads it out as well. If you do anything, please share. Please share, please tweet. Um, I can put in Sarah's Twitter handle for you as well as mine. Go and grab Sarah's. Second. Here we go. This is Sarah, and this is me. Tweet, tag, enjoy, go one note crazy, it'll change your life. Thank you so much for coming along tonight. If you do have any questions that you haven't asked tonight, feel free to tweet about it, tag us, and we'll get back to you for sure. There's a huge amount of expertise out on Twitter. Somebody will answer you. We definitely love to see your badges and certificates. Share your certificates. Yeah, seeing real life examples is a great. A great help, isn't it? I love seeing what people are doing. Thank you so much for coming along tonight. I don't know if there's anything else uh, that we didn't cover tonight. I think we pretty much threw every single piece of information and how to use OneNote. I use it to save all my CLPL notes. I've got a OneNote just for CLPL. I take pictures, like Sarah was saying, when she goes to meetings, that's what I do, take pictures. And I'll, I'll sit and dictate things into it or use audio to keep a record of my CLPL. And then I can upload all that information I can gather on the day into my GTCFS profile. So super helpful. Yeah, snipping tool to take text, never tried it on pictures, yeah. We did try and upload uh, some um, pictures from a picture book to see if Immersive Reader would read it, but the only picture book I had was in Scots, so um, it didn't detect any text, and it was the tail of the wee Maori. <laughs> so it didn't detect text, but I will practice and see if I can find out if it does work. If anybody else gets it working, please let us know.
don't forget to leave your feedback for us. There we go. Thank you, Mrs. Hutchison. Thank you, Ms. Douglas.